So now you're going to use a different shape, and will you just kind of take us through the process? Hello, everybody, and we are with the amazing, amazing Thank you. Sue. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. And we are enjoying the very, mer ber the very yep. merry month of <laughs> um, Sue. And um, actually, one of my favorite designs that I've seen you do, as well as I have tried to do myself and not done it half as good as you, is Mimsy. And would you? I be love willing? Mimsy too. I think it's amazing, because I'm flowers. I'm all about the flowers. So. And this is kind of a funky flower. It is, and it's folded over, so it's dimensional. Which, mm -hmm. I, at least, that's how I see it. Mm -hmm. No, so, it's got a lot of good dimension. I agree. So, will you share it with us? Absolutely. Okay. So, I'm going to go down to the table, and I'm going to uh, give them an idea of where we're headed and what Mimsy is. And that's in Philharmonics. Is it that, sure is. Okay. So okay. this is the design Mimsy, and it is from this book, Philharmonics. Kismet quilting. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Meant to be. Yeah, meant to be. That's mm -hmm. right. That's mm -hmm. what that is. So this looks very, very complicated, but when you put it in a grid, anything in a grid, you know the math is going to all work out for you. The spacing is going to be perfect. So all you really need to know is this shape, one shape and how to do a swirl. So let's show you. First, I'm gonna draft it out, and my husband did this great thing here. This is a separate purchase because um, if you know how to do this, if you're a math person, then why, why increase the cost of the book? Right. So um, in my later books, this is... Um, yeah, I would live and die by these. Right, these are great. right. But I need it. In my last two books out of the five that I've produced, now we're getting uh, delayed intelligence. Yep. We're actually putting these in in the actual book. But for this book, that's separate, and it's not a lot of money. Um, but what it does is it is it lets you proportionately scale the the designs up and down, and we we just went even inches here. So. In red, that's the size that it appears in the book. And then my husband drafted it from four inch finished up to a 12 inch finished piece. So we're gonna do the six inch, did we say, or seven? Yeah, I like six. Six, six? Nice. all right. So I'm gonna use, so this would be my fabric or paper, cause you wanna learn first on paper. We're using the circle liner. Yeah. Again, I love the circle Highly liner. Highly technical tools here. Yay. <laughs> a cap and a thumbtack. Does that come with the circle liner? Yes, it does. Okay. However, my insurance guy mm -hmm. would not insure my business. Why? Because I have a sharp object in my packaging. Oh, my gosh. This is a true story. So I have to put the, the smallest thumbtack I can find on the market and make sure the cap totally closes it over. Got it. Now, if you're using double bats or, you know, wool or something like that, please, I can't do it because of insurance, but he doesn't know quilters. We right. work well with sharp things. Oh, yeah. Um, so just get a bigger tack and you'll be happy. Awesome. Right? So I'm going to put this, this would be pre-marked where the center of my design will be on my quilt, but for now that is the center. And I'm going to pop this on. So now this is the front of my fabric. Put on the cap for safety, and we can go. So now it's all attached. You domestic free motion quilters out there, this is how you would pre-mark your fabric before you baste. On the long arm, however, this is meant to work on the long arm too. Just ratchet your fabric so you've got it kind of drum tight. That's usually about three clicks. This this uh, pops on with the aid of a little rubber disc, also comes in the packaging, that goes on the underside of the fabric. Stick your corsage pin through the layers, and you've got it. And they can go s watch the Coffee with Jamie with Sue Hines. Absolutely. And we actually do this on the long arm. Now, I would like you, when you draw this out, would you mind doing this on the sit-down machine? Sure, I love, okay. I love I to do love, this. I would love to see you quilt it out on the sit-down. I love watching sit-down Sit-downs are my first love. Well. Awesome. 
So I'm very comfortable with that. You bet. All right, so now I'm going to look at my chart here. And for a six inch circle, I want one and a quarter inches and five and a half inches. So I'm just gonna look here, orientate this towards my top. These are my whole numbers. Everything increases by eighths along each ray as you go clockwise. So I'm looking for five and a half, so that would be at the bottom. And it's just that simple to do a perfect circle. And now I'm gonna do a one and a quarter. One and, I start to spin at two and above. So one and a quarter, I'm gonna be using this these cutouts here. And I wanna align it, so I just do a little L shape. And I'm doing, whoops, you wanted the seven inch. I'm doing a yes, six. Okay, oh, six. it's gonna be a six inch, because yep. that's what I started with. All right. So one and a quarter is right here, and every one of these circles has lines that you can align with the circle here and my mark. So now I know it is perfectly concentric, and now I can draft that, and can we've I look at got this for it. A second. Mm -hmm. Patented. You patented this? Correct. Awesome. It took us three okay. years. Awesome. Awesome. I just want to make sure to... Uh, I didn't know that you patented that. That's yes. awesome. Okay. In fact, all of my Mylar tools fall under the same patent. Beautiful. So that's kind of nice. That's all a right. smart thing to do for artists. Now, Mimsy is divided into 16 sections. So that'll work. Pop this back on. And I'll show you how to do 16 when you only have eight slits. You always want to go... Each slit has a dark mark next to it. Please run your marking tool along the edge with the dark mark. And that way all of your lines align. And by the way, you can get rid of these lines with just a little bit of rubbing alcohol and they'll come right off. Amen. So don't worry about wrecking your tool. All right, now what I'm gonna do is rotate this so that one of my previously drawn lines aligns with there, right there. Very cool, again. I either use this one or this one, so yeah. it's all aligned. And now I can go ahead and do one more round of eight, and then I'll have 16. And then we can get going. So again, this would all be pre-marked on your fabric before you can sew out this design. But look, no math. Thank you. The tool does it all for you. Wow, that's way so awesome. So that's that. So Mimsy starts like this. I am going to start my swirl at one of these spokes. So I usually start here, swirl in, I do a teardrop shape at the end, and this is the hardest part. Follow this all the way back out. Love it. Now, what you could do is do your teardrop, stop, cut thread. Oh, did I say cut thread? Oh my gosh, this isn't continuous. That's wonderful. You know I love to cut thread. I do too. I like to bury thread. Oh, there we won't you won't get into yeah, that. But anyway. Me. If you, if this is the hardest part, it's just backtracking through all of this, okay? And, and then you just wanna stop on one of these spokes. So now I'm going to do a big elongated pointed oval like that. Come to a point here, a point there. Each pattern takes up two of these grids. I'm gonna do a giant S curve all the way up to the top, then backtrack and do this. So you go out, come on back, ride this line all the way back down. Try and keep these parallel to each other. I'm gonna zoom in on you, Sue. All right, I'm gonna keep drawing. I'm gonna slide you up, I'm gonna pause you for just a sec, if all that's right. okay. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to, there we go, my dear. And 
And once you've got the entire design right now, it's all you need to learn. So on any machine, when you're doing this detail work and you have to stay on the line, just slow down. Just slow down. All right now you travel to the middle here of the next two segments and do it all over again. Come on up to the top back down to a point, giant S curve, and come on back down. Mirrored, because they're opposite numbers. Almost, am I right? So the curve, the S's, I love that. What did you mean by mirrored? Mirrored, it's, um, am I, okay, hold on. So this one is going this way, and this one's going that oh, way. I love it. You know what? That was even a mistake. No, I think <laughs> that is cool. And you know what? That's why it hit me, because I love this design so much. I never thought of mirroring it, and I love mirrored images. Oh, almost well, like I, a tulip. I planned on that all That's along. That's awesome. Okay, so yes. now I have to repeat it. And really, um, I usually go, I don't know why I went opposite, but... Both ways work. Providence. That His, is the month of Sioux variation. That is the month of Sioux variation. I would call it kismet. Love All right, it. come on over. Now let's see if you can duplicate. Yeah, pressure's on now. <laughs> All right, so I'm coming out of the left-hand side. Right-hand side, rather. I love it. And then come on down. So you've got the whole design right That's there. It. Just keep on yep. going around. And what's great about a grid design is you know it's going to be perfect. You know it's going to be evenly spaced. You just stay within your boundary of whatever grid you're working with. Uh -huh. Let me keep going, or should we go over to the machine? So, absolutely. We're going to go over to the machine. Let's take this over to the machine. Okay. okay. Excellent. Okay, so now we are going to do our Mimsy, and we're going to do this in the round on the sit-down machine. Now remember, if you have a long arm, it's going to be exactly the same, except you're going to be moving your machine and doing it just like we were drawing it at the table right now. So I'm going to turn this over to Sue. Sue, kind of walk us through at this point what you're doing, and then, of course, we'll see Mimsy and see what, where we're headed. All right. Well, this is where we're headed. And it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern uh, with a lots of, of um, now this, I have a double, double batted in here. So I really wanted to accentuate the puff and it never fails. It's a beautiful design. Beyond gorgeous. Absolutely. So what I've done then uh, to set up for this, I've used my circle liner and I've made a circle and then I've divided this circle. Uh, I have two circles, a center one and an outside one. And then I've divided this into 12 sections using my triliner. So now I'm ready to go, but I've got these, these um, basting threads in my way. What I love, love, love about this, um, this method of basting is all I have to do is make a few snips and get them out of my way. And again, using a, a halo like this, which is what this product is called, then um, it kind of acts as an embroidery ring, so it holds everything evenly in place uh, with my thread. And I know, okay, I'll snip these later, but where I'm going to be sewing now is free and clear. And it keeps everything else around it nice and stabilized, so it's a good thing. Okay, I'm going to do my center first. So needle down. And I should add, before you get started, we are quilting because people will ask. We are on the Handy Quilter Suite 16, and it is on the Insight table. And you are on non-stitch regulator, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Manual speed. And um, I typically sew with my needle in the down position, so when I stop, it won't move on me. So I do have uh, that... Um, synced and ready to go. So here we go. Now notice my hand positions. For those of you who are sewing on a domestic machine, so your your um, machine is off to your right side and your, your space for sewing is here, don't get used to having your hands 
like this because eventually you're going to have a big uh, roll of, of um, quilt there and so you kind of want to do six and nine o'clock for your hand position. All right, let me just scoot this under the foot. I'm going to do, uh, to start, I'm going to do a large spiral in. Kind of do a teardrop at the end. And then this is the hardest part of Mimsy is backtracking on a curve out. As soon as I hit this line, I'm going to finish off my circle. And I'm starting now at one of the spokes. So I'm right at this spoke here. And now I'm going to do my uh, a fairly large leaf. I'm going to arc up here, point here, and come on down. So each leaf in this shape takes up two of my sections. So again, I'm kind of trying from middle here, hit there, come up to the point. I'm looking here at middle. And then so I hit that line and then I'm going to come down to the point here like that. Right up on this just a little bit, do a giant S curve up and come all the way up to the point. Well, about like that, up to the point. And now I'm going to do a series of lines with a circle on the end and come on back. And you're going to be traveling down this curve. That's gorgeous. So exacting. My machine speed is pretty consistent. So I want to keep it there. And that helps me then know how fast or slow I need to move the fabric to maintain what I'm looking at, if that makes sense. Makes complete sense. And then when I get down here, I'm just going to do lines because your eye will fill in what you can't fit in. And then you just go back down to the circle. I'm going to travel over to the middle of the next two segments and do it all over again and make sure I touch that last leaf that I made. Go up to the point. And I went over here on purpose because these lines won't exist later. So I'm just going to modify this next leaf so it looks all perfect but you know if you if you wobble a little bit don't worry about it s curve up and parallel lines notice my hands are nice and relaxed and i'm pretty much only sewing with two fingers and everything's stable. Yeah, this this ring does does make it easy, uh, but again, you just have to get like anything, get used to it. But I'm not gripping. I'm I'm being very easy on my hands. And by filling in these lines as I go down, that's really also making the batting puff up. So it's going to make me look like a rock star. But is this hard? No. All I've had to learn is one shape. Well, okay, two shapes with the spiral. So you tell me, Jamie. So there you go on that. Um, do you, Should we do the whole thing or half of it? Or I think finishing that petal 
they get the they get the gist of that. All right. As you work through it. And again, this is a shorter width pedal than these, but in the scheme of things, again, it will not be noticeable at all. So don't think you've got to um, rip out everything, you know, because it's not perfect. This is free motion quilting, which means I love to to see the little foibles because that tells me a, a person did it, not a computer. And I think it it is actually more attractive to my eye. Don't you feel that, Jamie? It, absolutely. It, it's it's more human. It's more organic and it's more human. Yeah, and it makes me want to walk up to that quilt and look at it even more. I love... Um, the, I find more value in it. Yeah, I love the phrase that um, quilting is not... It's a intimate experience which means you need to get up really close to the piece to see the quilting. Let me just get those out of the way because I'm going to uh, tie off those later. And then I just move over to the next one, and that is Mimsy. I absolutely love it.